The chemistry you see here is really appealing. You start with acetone, a small, cheap molecule. Treat it with a strong, bulky base at low temperature. In a second step, you add an alkyl halide, and out comes a substituted acetone. You've taken acetone and attached an alkyl group to it. You've made a carbon-carbon bond. From a small, cheap molecule, you've made a larger one. But this chemistry isn't perfect. There are some drawbacks. First, LDA, lithium diethyl amide, is expensive. It's made by treating lithium diethylamine with a rather expensive base, butyl lithium or something like it. Second, because LDA is so sensitive to water, this approach requires completely anhydrous conditions. You have to work very hard to get all the water out and keep it out during the reaction itself. And thirdly, use of the enolate of acetone itself can lead to byproducts. This not only reduces yields, but it makes purification a problem. There's a much older approach that works very well for making methyl ketones or substituted acetones. Take a look. The starting material is a compound called ethyl acetoacetate. It's an ester, so we put ethyl way out in front. Acetoacetic ester is another common name. And it's this second name that's used to describe the synthesis of methyl ketones, the acetoacetic ester synthesis. The concept is to start with ethyl acetoacetate and replace the carboxy group. Here's the new carbon-carbon bond. And the alkyl piece comes from an alkyl bromide or another compound that has a similar leaving group. You see, I've written this bond in the same orientation that we have for the new carbon-carbon bond we want to make. So we have an acetone piece that comes from the ethyl acetoacetate. There it is, and here it is in the product. The other carbons come from an alkyl bromide, and we lose the ethyl carboxylate group. How do we make all that happen? Well, look at this. Ethyl acetoacetate has a very acidic hydrogen. pKa is about 11. So treatment of a base like ethoxide completely removes the proton. Once we've made the enolate, it can be treated with the alkyl halide to add the alkyl group between the two carbonyl groups. This product is treated sequentially with base and water that hydrolyzes the ester, then strong acid that protonates the carboxylate salt that's formed during saponification, and then simply heated, and out comes product these steps are all very manageable in the laboratory and can be done on large scale. Ethyl acetoacetate is relatively cheap to buy, so this is a good synthesis of compounds that we can call substituted acetones. Let's take a look at the mechanistic detail, and then you'll be able to remember this better. When this is treated with ethoxide, the hydrogens between the two carbonyls is much more acidic than any other. This forms an enolate that is stabilized by resonance, not by one carbonyl, but by two. Although the resonance structures that have the negative charge on oxygen are the major contributors, this enolate typically alkylates at carbon. The enolate acts as a nucleophile in an SN2 reaction. This makes the new carbon-carbon bond and builds the molecule, but we also have to lose the carboeth oxycarbon. To make that happen, the ester has to be transformed into a carboxylic acid. Saponification using basin water is the standard method. And the initial product is a carboxylic acid salt, which is readily protonated using a strong acid like sulfuric acid in water. Now it happens that beta carbonyl carboxylic acids lose CO2. I'm going to take this structure, which is a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid, and rewrite it. And when this guy is heated, nothing more than heat, in a reaction where everything happens together, we call that concerted, with the movement of three pairs of electrons, CO2 is lost and an enol is formed. Enols are in equilibrium with the ketone, which vastly favors the ketone. So for practical purposes, we can simply write isomerization of the enol to the ketone. It's the loss of CO2 that is a driving force for this reaction. CO2 is very stable, and we break one molecule into two. 
which is favored by entropy, for both on the basis of enthalpy considerations and entropy considerations, the decarboxylation is favored. And once we've made that enol, it quickly isomerizes to the ketone. So let me show you how to make sense of this for synthesis. Now, if you have a target compound to make that is a methyl ketone and also has a CH on the other side, CH or CH2, so we can consider this a substituted acetone. You can make this using the acetoacetic ester synthesis. To help keep exactly straight what you want, I suggest you write ethyl acetoacetate like this because this carboethoxy group is going to be lost. And write the alkyl bromide that you want like this that shows the carbon-carbon bond you're going to make in place of the carbon-bromine bond. Remember, this has to be primary, as I've shown here, or methyl. When it's methyl, we almost always use methyl iodide, simply because it's a liquid and iodine is easy to displace. As we look at the target, we see acetone that's attached to an alkyl group. I've shown the new bond as a dashed line. The acetone comes from ethyl acetoacetate, which has a piece we're going to throw away, ethyl carboxylate. And the alkyl group we need is CH2R, has a leaving group attached to it. I typically write bromide, but it doesn't have to be. So to summarize, there are two ways to make substituted acetones that are methyl ketones. Direct alkylation using LDA at low temperature, followed by alkylation, is appealing, but has some drawbacks. Use of ethyl acetoacetate is a five-step process. Each step is very good and also gives good yields of the same product. After alkylation comes saponification, acidification, and decarboxylation. The starting material and all the reagents are cheap. This can be done on a large scale and provides a very good alternative 